Hello, I'm Evan Siroki, and I'm going to start my talk by walking from where I'm standing to over there, the southbound train platform at San Antonio Station in Mountain View, California, USA. And I'm going to walk there according to the shortest path possible according to OpenStreetMap data. All right, so here I go. I'm going to begin my walk by walking along the sidewalk. So here's a little bit of background about myself. I work at IBI Group on our transit data team, and I help set up and maintain Open Trip Planner for various clients. Open Trip Planner is an open source multimodal journey planner that's able to calculate walking trips as part of a, say, walk to transit uh, journey, for example. So why am I walking this way? Well, that little access ramp from the sidewalk to the platform, it's not yet mapped in OpenStreetMap. And you see this uh, little step, these steps right over here? Yeah, those steps aren't mapped in OpenStreetMap yet either. And there's only one connection to the platform, and I still haven't reached it. So if OpenStreetMap doesn't contain a walkable way that, where one exists in real life, then trip planners like Open Trip Planner will be unable to calculate walking directions along those paths. While each individual problem may not be a big deal, taken together, uh, these can all add up and result in too slow or sometimes even too fast journeys. And mappers must take care to make, their, make sure that there is good pedestrian connectivity in OpenStreetMap. In this case, the shortest path involves walking all the way to the end of the platform, which is about 575 feet or 175 meters. Now, let me tell you about a few other common pedestrian connectivity problems in OpenStreetMap and how to fix them. I'm standing here at the corner of Lick and Floyd in San Jose, California. In OpenStreetMap, the sidewalk I'm standing on is mapped as a separate way. However, there aren't any crosswalks mapped across this intersection. This can result in circuitous paths being found. When mapping, make sure that every possible connection point is mapped so that trip planners can utilize these connections. Open Trip Planner is able to provide walking directions along transit platforms. However, a few common problems can exist with platforms. I'm here on the Tommy and Caltrain station platform in San Jose, California, and it's not connected to any other walkable ways in OpenStreetMap. Therefore, this platform won't be used in trip planning results. Instead, the directions to this stop might suggest boarding a train from a bike path at the side or un from the underground walkway below. So make sure to connect platforms to the rest of the walkable network. The more connections, the better. One gotcha about platforms is that trip planners often aren't smart enough to be able to find paths through platforms if they're mapped as areas like this one. This platform is at Capitol Station in San Jose, California, and it's connected to these uh, stairs and ramps. However, a trip planner might recommend walking around the edge of this platform in order to board the train. To fix this, it's oftentimes helpful to add a little footway between one side of the platform and the other. OpenStreetMap can be mapped in a way that will yield too fast walking directions. This often occurs when there is good connectivity, but it lacks sufficient detail. Over here at Kent Station in Kent, Washington, USA, there is a bridge over railway tracks that is connected directly to ground level footpaths. This implies that the bridge can be accessed from the ground level. However, this bridge is two stories up in the air and must be accessed either by stairs or an elevator. This has important implications for people with disabilities or people riding bicycles. Trip planners won't know that there is an elevator here and also won't be able to tell that it is only accessible from the train platform level. Also, this ramp to the train platform is missing from OpenStreetMap. For people riding a bicycle, going over this bridge might not be worth the extra time and effort compared to bicycling across the tracks just a little further south. So make sure to always add stairs and elevators if they exist. One final thing I'd like to talk about is about walking directions near parking lots and parking rides. At least for OpenStreetMap and maybe other trip planners too, it won't be able to find walking directions to the parking lot area itself. Instead, it will need parking aisles or other waffle ways in order to uh, find walking directions. So I'm walking by uh, YMCA here in Mountain View, California, and that path exists, but it ends right here at the boundary of the parking lot. So for trip planners to be able to find directions through here, either that pathway would meet, need to be extended to the parking aisle, or that sidewalk would need to be added. All right, so that's my talk. Thanks for watching, and have fun mapping pedestrian connections.